for us, I, I think in the coming months or even in the coming years, we will be looking at um, surely in Southeast Asia. Photo Singapore is actually the headquarter for Southeast Asia and we look forward to working with uh, more regulators or even partners in overseas and, uh, and we look forward to bring our service to, to Southeast Asia and uh, in the different countries. Of course, uh, in terms of pipeline, uh, maybe on our side, we, we may be able to update on a later date. I'm going to follow up on, on the issue of risk for retail investors. Um, now, I don't wish to demean your average retail investor, but you do get a very large number of people coming into markets, particularly in the bull markets that we've been seeing for so long. Sure. Uh, and they make money. It's a fairly easy process. It seems fairly easy because the market is always going up. Uh, a number of them don't even know what a margin trade is. A number of them open accounts that might be margin trading accounts rather than just basic investing accounts and find themselves in positions where they weren't necessarily prepared for the outcomes of a bear market or a short call or something like that. You talked about education. Tell me a little bit more about how are you trying to educate retail investors okay. to, to be aware of the pitfalls here. Yeah, sure. I mean, on our site right now, currently, if you talk about education, in terms of the Mumu in Singapore, we have more than 300 clips. And it, the, in terms of uh, topics, it, it actually varies from all the way how do you actually look into introduction to how to read uh, financial statements, all the way to understanding the different products. And we actually cater to different levels uh, in terms of knowledge levels and age itself. So these are, these are things that we, we want how, clients. How, yeah. how do you actually get people to engage with that side of it? Because, you know, there, there is... Uh, in my mind at least, a fairly clear um, conflict psychologically for a retail investor when they're bombarded with advertisements to try and get them to trade because obviously in, in, it's in the interests of the platform to get them to trade more frequently. And I'm not saying suggesting that your advertisements are irresponsible, but there is a, an inherent conflict between trying to get people to trade and trying to get people to learn about trading. Um, uh, ra rather than to get clients to, to, to trade itself, uh, I, I will put in as, um, you know, on our side, we are actually trying to educate clients in terms of their investment journey. Uh, I, I would not say that, you know, we will be picking out products, uh, but I've got to say generally we will be helping clients in terms of their long investment journey and we hope to educate them. And, um, you know, and we want to show that, um, you know, with this, with this clearing membership and with more license that we will be getting, we are a trustworthy and it will be a trustworthy platform where clients will be able to find all the investment knowledge over in Mumu apps itself. And of course, I mean, if you look at market, it will be volatile. And we also do, do see that. And, uh, you know, right now, currently, we are planning with uh, more other different range of products so that it will be able to cater in terms of clients, in terms of their investment needs. And, um, you know, from there, uh, it will accompany clients in different volatile or, you know, stable situation where clients will be looking at investing into different products. And of course, this will, you know, you know encompass with, uh, in terms of, um, you know, in terms of, um, you know, the educations and you know, with the COVID measures that is more relaxed right now, we will be holding a lot of face-to-face -face talks and we will be even be able to meet more and more retail clients or even clients in Singapore very soon. All right.